finding new subjects to paint after doing 700 of visit videos is it's quite challenging and I know I, I repeat myself quite a lot but I try to do different versions of, of old ideas so I'm going to just make this one up I, I do really enjoy using this acrylic ink uh, paint 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 and just making marks and seeing how we go I've I've got something in mind of sort of a bank, bit of bank of trees coming down here a bit of hill and we'll, we'll see where, where we go so it starts off fairly low so just put in some grass and I know you like these I think it's the contrast between the black and the white that makes them quite attractive so we'll come down quite low with this and we'll I'll put in a path okay and as we go towards the back we'll we'll make things just a little bit less distinct grandson of John Paul is today. This is voting so all the schools are shut. Because there are now polling stations. I said he could come up and mooch around if he wants to but the better that he it gives me a bit of space to do this. Okay, so we'll put a bit of uh, bit of grasses, more of a bush in there. Not a lot of difference between painting, is it really? We're just using one colour. More detail in the foreground. So we'll put in a let's say put in a a fence. Five bar gate, it, which is a traditional form of gate in, in the UK. Have to remember to put the cantilever supports on the right going the right way. So, so that way, so let's come down here. Then we've got some, there'll be two, a, la, a post holding the gate shut. And a larger one there. And then we can just cut across. Here. I'm just making this up as I go along. When you do fences, don't put everything in. It's a bit of hit, hit and miss. Uh, and I'll lose some of this in the bushes. stuff come across there. A bit of detail over there. See there's all over England these gates. Down there a bit. So I'm just using a bit of water to dilute it, keep it nice and soft and I can even put a bit of reflection for the sky and, and the fence in there, or the gate. I 
I can really lose myself in this sort of thing. Edward Wesson did a lot of this. Loads of sketches and worked up paintings from them. <coughs> of course you can adapt this to any type of painting you, you like. Whether you put buildings in. And The idea is to keep one side subordinate to the other. Don't make carbon copies of like two sides. Just a hedge row here. Put more detail in. It's dark. When you put the paint on it, it all sort of merges, it lessens the intensity of the contrast. Just using the heel of the brush, a bit of dry paint, and I do like winter trees. It's just showing the tracery of the branches and twigs and stuff. Trying to get a pleasant shape. Right, that's more or less that side put in. Nice rural type of thing. Now here we go with the heavier stuff now. And we'll put a bit of a hedgerow in here. A bit, bit of dark. Look, I'm using the size of the brush for this. And then we'll do some, some trees coming out of there. Ivy. That's a plant, not a person. go voting soon. <coughs> we can have that one coming down here a bit. So that it looks closer than the one on the right. Come up here with. By the time I put the the uh, foliage on, the the twigs and ivy and stuff, it'll look a bit better. We can just uh, put the fence in. We can put the fence up here.
behind that I'll put in some some violety blue to show some trees going behind all this. That's another one here. Loses in the hedgerows, the base of them, there is. Ah. Okay, so there we have a nice, I won't do any more. I'll tell you what I will do though, I'll, no I won't, I was going to sign it with black, but I'll do that with, with the paint. Right, okay, so I'm going to give this a, a dry, so take your headphones off. I like looking at this as same as you do because of the contrast. I've got three books on Edward Wesson and it, they're, they're, they are interspersed with uh, photographs of his black ink drawings. He was brilliant at doing architectural stuff. I'm not. I stick to what I can do. I believe you moved 40, 50 years ago, 50 years ago. I looked at stuff like this in pencil, ink maybe, and I just fell in love with it. And I, it took me years to be able to do something as bad as this really. But I didn't give up. I just carried on doing it. Now, uh, the paper is Fabriano, £130. And my palette has been kept in this... Uh, document bag, a ziplock, as it keeps the paint, paint nice and moist when I'm not using it. Uh, the trays, uh, one of the sub my subscribers has come up with a, with a supplier, www.kabi.co.uk and he got these for less than two pounds each plus three quid po pounds postage. Very, very cheap. If you buy them, buy, buy, buy four, buy, buy four. Because with this size palette, you can have, have them in the Ziploc bags and you can work on two or three palettes at, at different times. That's what I'm doing anyway. I've got two of them and maybe I will buy some more. So, we're now going to wash in with colour. So in the usual me method, uh, I've, I've got three hakes on the go here. I'll uh, wet all over. Now when the, when the paper expands, you can re-clip it, keep it all nice and flat. Okay, I'm going to use, uh, I think I'll use a, a limited palette on this, of um, uh, Payne's Grey. Oh, I'll just work away. Uh, I'm going to use some burnt umber in the sky, it's a bit dirty. Still from yesterday's Payne's Grey mixed in with that burnt sienna. Bit of raw sienna as well. Go all over with it. Put in a bit of a blue, bluey cloud, blue grey. In there. 
a bit stronger with this burnt sienna, just, just in there. Okay, now when you get hairs it's stuck uh, falling out of the brush onto your painting, leave them to dry, don't try to take them off. It won't help. Right, okay, so while that's damp I'll put in a bit of a wash of sienna. Come across here. Leaving some bits of sparkle, bit of bit of white showing here and there. And a bit of grey, bit of yellow. Just vary vary your colours. Otherwise it'll be a bit monotonous, so we can put some greens in there. Okay, and we'll do the same on the other side. And we've got the shadow, remember, so we can put those in later. But just remember that they're there. Bit of lemon yellow. I'm going to reclip the paper in a moment. Okay, so that's the start. See, this is all about about drawing rather than painting. We're, we're, we're just filling in the colours. We're just colouring in, really. Now, while that's doing, I'm just going to put a bit of a, a nice background. I'll just put a bit of paint going, a bit of blue. Uh, a bit of sienna in there, a bit of green, or a bit of yellow, which is green. Okay, that, that will do. I think if, if I was the, the bulb was flatter rather than almost vertical, that would merge a bit better than it does. It's all falling down away from where I wanted it to blend upwards. But never mind, I can put in some. Um, some trees on the on the on that just a little bit of light detail. But what now? I'm just going to try that again. The headphones off. I want to do some some blue. That, that blue and mauve. That blue blue and uh, alizarin. I want to put behind those trees. But I don't want it um, too dark, but I want it to show enough to give the impression that we've got some trees behind. Or at least give a 3D effect to the to that tree, the, the, those trees. That's probably a bit too dark. So just And more over the other side. Right, that gives a bit of a 3D effect. And when I, I'll dry it off, but when, it, when I put the, the siennas and the dark greens in there for the ivy, <coughs> it will, hopefully we'll throw that blue back. So I'm just going to dry this bit. And put some life into the trees now, into the evergreen. So, a bit of burnt sienna and a bit of Payne's grey, a bit of lemon yellow. Um, just see that that cuts the uh, contrast down, the black and white. A bit more sienna in there, just for the corner of the hake. And then we'll uh, put in some some canopy with those colours. I 
I really do like the uh, winter trees. I love seeing the tracery. So then, now we're going to put in some shadow and use just a bit blue and red for that. So the shadows are very important. You do, you're not normally, you shouldn't really be aware of them, but they're there. They're there, just doing their their stuff, creating the three D effect. Just made them more solid. Put more twigs. This is my way of showing twigs. But it's just more or less a, sort of a dry brush. And warm. So there we are. You can just keep practicing and refining, make your own landscapes up as I do. Let's put a bit of uh, something on those trees there, a bit of burnt sienna and a bit of ultramarine. Just, just a sort of cartoony background there. And now I'm going to do this this path. A bit of, bit of red, a bit of ultramarine. No, my palette is lemon yellow, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, paint grey, and burnt sienna. You don't have to use them all. Too bad for number. My acres split into its clumps. And a bit of grey in there, just a bit of. Sort of ruts didn't really come off. You really don't need to stretch this paper. It's uh, it's very good. You're just using the clips. Just just when it expands, just just put it tight. It really does work. It's it, look. It's, it's, we've got more or less flat, but that's that's as flat as you want. Just put in a few, a few bits and pieces like that. I should uh, put a figure in of something, some description. Uh, so let's put in a figure. I might put it here to say that it gives the impression it's gone through the fence. Well, let's, let's put it there. A bit stronger. When you do these figures, 
just put them in, put the, don't make the heads too big. Right, I've just about finished now, I've got to go voting now. So let's just put a signature in there. Um, I'll just put in a bit of, a bit of heavier blue behind here. Just to give that impression of some trees behind, like a bit of a wood. Okay, I'll put it in the blue mount. And another one, but it's a dust mess production. All right, just put those down. Get them nice and flat. So there we are. We've, we've got another line and wash. Very simple. It looks complicated, but it is. And once you I've overdone that, it's looking a bit dark there, really. I just wanted to bring this tree forward of that. So, uh, let me know what you think. Let's bring the camera in a bit closer. So you can see. So I'm, I'm reasonably pleased with that. I think the sky's okay, it's got a bit wet there with those hairs. But that's okay. The sky is just a um, just a backdrop to the to the rest of it, really. We've got the distance. We've got a nice shapes to the to the tops of these canopies, showing all the twigs in my short hand, and, and a, a fairly clean foreground. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Let's uh, zoom you in and have a look at let's have a look at that side first. This could be. Kent, it could be, uh, yeah, Kent, rolling hills of Kent, the Garden of England, my little figure, to go through the gate, and a bit more. So there we are, thanks for watching, bye for now.